In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a um, nursing housing tour video. A lot of you guys have been hitting me up ever since I posted on my Instagram um, about, well, since I posted a post on my Instagram talking about me travel nursing. A lot of you guys have been hitting me up to make a video on how to become a travel nurse, um, you know, the different agencies that there are, as well as a housing tour. So I'm gonna show you guys where I'm gonna be staying and then we can do a little sit down talking about how I got the housing, how the housing budget works and all of the details that you guys wanna know. It's not gonna be a long tour because this is a, sm a very small place. So let's just go ahead and get into All right, so starting off with the bathroom, let's get through this quickly because I know you guys wanna get to the good stuff. Um, this is the entrance door and when you enter the apartment the first thing you see on your right is the bathroom door I love this bathroom. I loved how white it was It really gave this like super clean fresh eerie spa type of vibe And I loved the decoration that they used or the color that they used for the bathroom It was really giving boho vibes with the tan and the brown the bathtub was massive Although I didn't use it uh, Whoever decides to use it is definitely gonna enjoy their bath because the tub is huge. It's nice. It's deep and yeah, that's pretty much it for the bathroom. All right, so for laundry, it's right next to the entrance door. Once again, just like the bathroom, but on the opposite side. I really appreciated the fact that there was in-unit laundry. It was super, super convenient. This place is very small, but surprisingly, it had enough space for everything. Um, you guys can see there was a little storage closet right here for me to put you know, just some extra stuff if ever I had to store things. So yeah, it was a very small place, but super efficient. I love the way this place was built. All right, so moving on to the kitchen on the left, I loved this little space. It was open concept, super, super clean. I had this fridge right here, big old fridge, more than enough for me alone. Um, there were a bunch of like really convenient things like a Keurig, a kettle, and a bunch of seasonings and oils and just different things in the pantry that actually came in clutch for me a few times, like the oil and stuff when I was cooking and forgot to buy oil. So bonus to the Airbnb owner for that that was super cool and yeah the place was super clean look at the stove fridge dishwasher and everything although i don't really use dishwashers but this place really came fully equipped um i loved the space So moving on to my favorite part of this apartment and that's the little living room area. It was so well decorated. I loved that fake plant. It just gave the apartment such a fresh feeling, but you guys don't even understand how comfortable this couch was. I think I might've dented it in a little bit by just spending so much time on it and just laying on it all day because it was so comfortable. The other thing that made it so cozy was, was this little fireplace area that actually gets really hot. So as you guys could imagine, I'm there with my little robe at night. I have my lo-fi music or an episode of Suits or a podcast going, my cup of tea. And it was just a vibe in here. The sunlight, everything was just great. But not only that, I also got to enjoy this amazing view. So for the bedroom, which is right facing the living room, you guys can see there are like two sliding doors, but I'll show you guys a little bit later. I think that this bedroom was so cute. Once again, I think the person who decorated this apartment was really going for like this boho type of vibe, which I think he or she 
killed and one of my favorite things about this bedroom is this large mirror not only mirror but closet so when i'm getting dressed i could see myself fully from head to toe make sure that the outfit is in check and it's a very big closet as you guys can see i made myself very very comfortable after all i was here for a month but um i also love these large windows that continue from the living room into the bedroom so at night i can just enjoy that view and once you go around to the other side, you have the other sliding door. So I didn't have to frustrate myself when making up my bed because I grew up with my bed being like stuck on the wall. So making it up was literally hell. But yeah, I like the fact that even if it was a small bedroom, I still had the two sliding doors so I can get to both sides of the bed in the morning. And this is pretty much what the whole space looks like. much to show here just a small little space with two chairs but i still appreciated it sometimes i would sit here and once again enjoy the view and i'm gonna show you guys again because i just think it's that pretty okay so travel nursing i'm probably gonna be doing another video a more in-depth video giving you guys all the details that you guys need to know in order to you know become a travel nurse and just make sure that you guys are on the um right track to becoming a travel nurse although different countries vary when it comes to the process and everything there are a lot of similarities especially between Canada and the US. I know that a lot of my viewers are from the US. When it comes to travel nursing, um, it, everything is pretty much similar. The, the process is similar, the requirements are similar, everything is similar. So no matter where you're from, most of the things that I talk about in that video will apply to you. But this video specifically, I just wanna talk about housing, how I got housing, how housing works, the different options that you have, and all of that. So when I got approved for my contract and everything was, you know, good and ready to go, housing was probably the very the very last thing that I had to do, right? So a lot of the times they'll tell you that they'll cover your transportation. A lot of the times transportation does not cover a um, rental car if you want to get a rental car. However, you can kind of finesse this in a way and what i mean by that is if you get let's say you're given a budget of i don't know um five thousand dollars for housing for the month right and you find an airbnb or you find housing that's four thousand dollars you can ask if they are willing to let you use the extra thousand dollars from the budget in order to get a car it's not always approved but you can ask most of the time when they say that transportation is covered though it can mean that they will either pay your uber depending on how far your the place that you're staying is from your workplace or a bus pass i was going to use the leftover to get a rental car i was going to have to pay a few extra hundred dollars out of pocket but the company ended up being a total scam so i just completely canceled everything and i've been maneuvering very very well here on the bus it's been about four years since i've taken the bus or since i've been on a bus but i must say that here in vancouver the buses come every 10 minutes and literally it picks me up in front of my building or in front of my temporary building and literally drops me in front of my workplace entrance door so it takes me about 20 minutes to get to work or 25 by bus and i just get on one bus and it's been super easy for the housing you're going to be given two options either you're going to take the housing that they give you or you're gonna get your own housing. When it comes to the housing that they offer you, if you are a person like me, I can be social, but I need to know that I'm going to be in a place that's quiet enough for me to record and quiet enough for me to think so that I can edit. I personally did not want to risk being put in a house where there's gonna be eight, nine other nurses because it is a possibility, right? It is possible that if you take their housing that you will be put in a place by yourself, but there is also the possibility that you might be housed with um, other nurses in you know, a multiple bedroom house and that's fine, but I just like to have my own personal space. So I decided to go with the second option, which is to find my own housing. They will give you a budget. The budget that was given to me was a $3,000 budget for the month. So I could not go over $3,000. Now I found a place that was $3,400, but I asked him if he would be willing to decrease the price to $3,200 since I'm a travel nurse and he actually accepted. So.
so I paid $200 out of my pocket to be here and then the agency is going to cover the $3,000 so the agency usually re reimburses you for um, the housing because you have to pay it out of your own pocket and then you're reimbursed on your first pay so they will pay you out of their own pocket and then they will bill the facility for whatever it is that they paid you that's usually how it works now the reason why I decided to pay that extra $200 out of pocket is because although there were other places slightly cheaper maybe two or three hundred dollars cheaper um, out in other places most of the places were outside of Vancouver right and so I don't have a car I had a car pre-booked but that didn't work out like I told you guys so for me to um, be commuting from you know Surrey or from Richmond or from Burnaby which are like outskirts of they're still in the metro Vancouver area but not Vancouver Vancouver it was gonna be a little bit too complicated because by drive it could be 30 to 40 minutes so by public transportation it can be a lot trickier as well although there is the sky train but since I have to hop on different buses and trains it was gonna be way too tricky and I wanted to be in a place where I was not too far from work so where I am now like I told you guys driving is like a 12 13 minute drive and by bus is about 25 minutes and I just have to take one bus so it's a lot easier and since it's downtown on my days off there are a ton ton of cafes and boutiques and malls and stores that I can go to I can either walk to them 10 15 minutes or I can grab a bus five minutes and I'm there so I thought that it was worth it for me to pay the extra $200 out of pocket that way it's easier for me to get get to work I don't have to wake up you know extremely early I work at 7 and I wake up at 5:15, and then I literally take the bus at about 6:15 or so and then I get to work for about 6:45, and I have an extra 15 minutes to drink my coffee and stuff like that whereas being a little bit further out would have been too tricky so like I said those are your two options either you pay you know they, they give you a budget you either pay that out of pocket and then they reimburse you or you go with the housing that they offer you but you don't necessarily know what you're walking into right some people are dirty some people are loud so that is how um, housing works if you haven't seen my vlog video my preparing for my travel nursing video and my a day in the life of a travel nurse video make sure you guys go check that out I'm really documenting this entire experience so that you guys can literally live it through me and see exactly what it's like but yeah that's pretty much it for housing so I'm gonna be making another very in-depth video like I said so if you guys have any questions when it comes to um, anything travel nursing related that you guys want me to cover in that in-depth video go ahead and leave it down below now is your chance and I will make sure that I include your question in my next video for now that is it um, don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all in my next one thank you guys so much for watching bye